guys welcome back to my channel I hope you're having a great day so far so today it is January favorites day and I'm excited because I feel like my January favorites are a really nice mix of things they're not all makeup there's some skincare there's some perfumes there's some I don't know what to call them but there's some things there are some things in here I also have one fail for the month which I always like to include a fail because you know I'm just evil that way <laughs> so without further ado let's get started because I have like groups of product I feel like I have quite a lot for January I guess it's because we didn't do a December favorites because that's where I put my yearly favorites so there are some things in here that strictly speaking I've been enjoying throughout December and January but obviously they didn't have enough time to sneak into the 2019 favorites I wanted to say 2020 then but I just about managed to hang in there so first of all I want to talk to you about some brushes now Refa last month I think maybe sent me across some of their new brushes that I hadn't tried yet and my favorite ones are as follows number 18 quickly became my absolute favorite under eye or concealer let's say setting brush so for setting under the eye with loose powder for setting the eyelid and um, when I've primed it for shadow and then all my concealer areas this is my favorite brush for that purpose it's just the perfect shape and size it picks up the perfect amount of powder um, without it being too much too little I love these super long tapered handles it just feels so nice and light but secure in the hand I love everything about these brushes this is my go-to under eye setting brush now number 19 instantly became my favorite blush brush of all time for me my heavy-handed self and also given that I have quite a narrow long face I have to be super careful with brush blush I know I've said this many times I have to be careful to keep it on the perimeters and not bring it in too far it's very hard it's a daily battle a daily battle for me let me tell you this brush nails it it's like a paint brush that's how I like to apply so instead of swirling I like to dab on and it gives me more control it doesn't pick up an insane amount of product but it does pick up harder formulas really really well so if it's if it's a stiffer formula in the pan that normally have to swirl this brush no effort picks it up beautifully but it doesn't pick up pigmented blushes in an insane way either it's just really nice and light and fluffy super soft the perfect shape and size for my cheek and really helps me control my blush application so that's number 19 and a new eye brush that I've been loving from them is the number 16 this is the perfect second crease brush it is just the perfect size obviously I have hooded eyes um, and so this is just the perfect size I have a lot of space between my hood and my brow um, so if you don't have that much space it may be too large to be your second crease brush this may be your first crease brush um, did I tell you what number it was 16 number 16 um, so for me this is the perfect second crease brush after the first crease brush you could also actually use this for highlight if you want a detailed highlight you know that's the good thing about really high quality brushes is that you can use them in about 58 different ways and then I finally picked up this month the Linda Holberg 306 which is Mel's favorite highlight brush I've been looking for a brush this sort of size and shape for highlight and Mel is right as always I have been using the Japanesque this doesn't have a number annoyingly um, but you can see how much bigger this is this is like a complexion brush um, it's just it was just called complexion brush much much bigger fluffier more splayed out um, and I don't know if it's softer but it's fluffier 
so it is mu it's much too big to go down the nose it's too big really for cupid's bow um but it is nice for cheekbone and above the brow this one what i love about it is it's the perfect size to do everywhere you turn it this way it's perfect down the nose brow cupid's bow chin it's just the perfect size for everywhere and again it keeps your highlight at the top of your cheekbone rather than it going all over your whole cheek which is what i find a lot of like fan brushes or brushes like this that are bigger or fatter i really really like this picks up the perfect amount of highlight really really grateful for mel for recommending that one so that's my tools next i'm going to talk to you about two perfumes i got both of these for my birthday oh by a lucky girl um the first one is mancera's red tobacco and look at this packaging so this is the external box you get this beautiful gold foiled drawstring bag and then this is the perfume bottle inside i've been lusting after this perfume for months i ordered a sample of it and um, from creed perfumes i think i think um to just check because it is it's definitely not a blind buy perfume it's definitely not a perfume to buy if you have not tried it it is potent it is very strong um, it's a unisex perfume i almost always buy unisex perfumes but it a lot of people feel that it's a unisex perfume that should only be worn by a man i don't care about that i like strong sensual sexy powerful scents i also my skin my skin chemistry is a perfume repellent my skin no perfume is strong and like room filling on me but apparently this can be that way on lots of people so if you're super warm you live in a super warm climate this again may not be for you so obviously red tobacco it has tobacco note but it's still sweet which is hence why i feel like it certainly is wearable by a woman um i don't really like my men my men all of my men I don't like my men to smell super sweet and on me the sweet notes really come through here but you can still start smell the tobacco throughout it which i find hard to find in a perfume tom ford's tobacco vanilla i love it at the beginning but the tobacco is on, instantly gone on me and then it's just a vanilla perfume um whereas this one it smells super unique super interesting and different the whole way it lasts multiple days you know you you can still smell it after a shower an entire day and if you're not as cold blooded as me then it is really incredibly projecting as well the silage on this one is like a bomb um like i said on me not so much but you can actually smell it and i get wasps of it throughout the day which is very rare for me with a perfume because like i said either my skin is repelling it or just sucking it all in who knows who knows what's going on but absolutely glorious unique perfume i also got a more kind of crowd pleasing perfume which is angel muse by mugler so this is the eau de parfum and again this is much less strange than red tobacco much more of a crowd pleaser much more of a compliment bomb much easier to wear this is just a woman's perfume not a unisex one so it's much lighter and fresher at the start but still in the dry down there's something you know just something different about it um it's got a really strong on me at least probably note in the middle which just smells like chocolate and then that kind of fades away to just a beautifully balanced base throughout the day a kind of sweet with a hint of just freshness and fruit to it with just a tiny touch of the praline at the end so super long wearing super good projection again but a much more kind of crowd pleasing less weird scent if that's more your thing i love them both one um kind of i don't even know what category i should put this in nails i guess this is what i'm wearing on my nails today this is op's op opi's put it in neutral i absolutely love this shade as you can see it's super neutral um you can still see my nail the tips of my nail through it and that is like three coats which i like just super natural pretty and feminine i really like a natural neutral nail 
<laughs> Alliteration is fun. So yeah, I highly recommend that shade if you're looking for a very easy everyday shade. My daughter will even let me put this one on her and she rejects any nail polish that in her words is not see-through or invisible. So make of that what you will. I got a lot of skincare this month, either I, that I purchased myself or that was sent to me. Um, I like to try things kind of one at a time when it comes to skincare so I'm still getting through a lot of the new stuff that I have because I don't want to try six different skincare products in one go in case something breaks me out, in case something is a miracle worker or in case something is rubbish I won't know which thing it is, which new thing is doing whatever it's doing, good or bad. So um, I added in the Bobbi Base, Bobbi Base? She's drunk still. Bobbi Brown Eye Repair Cream, the extra eye repair cream. I think last month, so I've been using this about a month now and I love it. It's super rich, super thick, um, so you only need a tiny amount, so it will really last you a long time. This has been going a month now and there is a lot left in there. I'm anticipating this lasting me a good four or five months, which does actually make it super good value. Um, I, I know a couple of you had mentioned to me that, oh, don't put you know makeup on for a long time after you've put that on, and I haven't had that issue at all. I put it on with my normal skincare. You know, I do my eyes first to give my skincare maybe 10 minutes to soak in, um, and I've never had an issue with my under eye area. It feels hydrated the entire day when I put it on in the morning, so I really, really have been enjoying that one. Good Molecules sent me over a box very, very, very generously um, of their skincare to try, which is amazing because I haven't tried anything from them yet. The, the only thing I've given a really good try to kind of feedback to you guys so far, because I'm just introducing things one at a time, is their Super Peptide Serum. So it's formulated with tripeptides to target fine lines, wrinkles, and dullness. So tick, 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 please. I find this so hydrating. This has really added a boost of hydration. I'm using this morning and night and I can definitely feel the difference in how hydrated I am in the morning after I've been to bed and just throughout the day having this in addition to my moisturiser. So I'd really recommend this if you have dry skin um, or if you have moist like oily skin that is caused by a lack of moisture um, to the skin. So yeah, I'm really, really enjoying this one. I've been using this for a good few weeks now. No problems, really enjoy it. Um, Becky Beauty sent me across this detoxifying pink clay mask. And I wasn't gonna include it because I've only had the chance to use it once because I only just got this a few days ago. But because it is a, a deep cleaning pink clay mask, all I really needed to try was one, did it suck all the life out of my pores? Yes, it did. Two, did it break me out? No, it didn't. So I feel like I can recommend this one to you after just one use, but bear that in mind, I have only used it once. It is, oh, I mean, the smell alone, oh, it's spa, just pure spa. And I love skincare that smells like spa because I don't get to go to the spa, there's no time. Um, so it makes me, you know, feel like I'm there. It comes with the world's cutest little mini brush, which I just, I love a skincare brush. I know it's the bougiest thing ever, but I just love it. I can't get enough. Cleans off really easily and it comes with a little guard so you can keep it clean and safe once it's all washed off. How do I get this back in? Yeah, and I used this on my birthday night when I went out with my husband. I used this before I went out just to really clean out my skin, get all the filth out of there. And it was like, you know, when you've done a clay mask and you have all the pores all over and there were many, many pores. The other thing I loved about it is it was quick to dry. It said leave it on for 10 minutes. And I'm a bit heavy handed with clay masks and I feel like generally they take like 20 to 30 minutes to dry because I put on too much, like it's too thick. I put on a decent layer of this and it was fully dried in maybe just over 10 minutes, let's say 12 for the record. Really, really impressed with that. So thank you very much for Becky Beauty for sending that one across. I will 
definitely continue to use that one. And last but not least for the skincare, I believe, is the CeraVe Hydrating Cleanser for normal to dry skin. So previously I was sent the smoothing cleanser from CeraVe and so when that one ran out, I wanted to try another one because I really liked the smoothing cleanser. So I tried the hydrating cleanser and let me tell you, it's a hydrating cleanser. Shocking, I know. I know that sounds stupid, but I never thought a cleanser really is going to be hydrating because obviously you're stripping your skin when you're cleansing your skin. Um, so I use this as my second step. I go in with my MAC Cleanse Off Oil and then wash my face with this um, and my makeup pad from Becky Beauty. And the first few times I used this, I was like, my God, after washing my face with a cleanser, like some kind of cleanser, anything like this, usually your skin feels dry, doesn't it? Because you've stripped everything off and then you go in with your serums and your moisturizers to rehydrate my skin after I've washed my face with this feels hydrated it's like voodoo I really enjoy this one I would definitely keep repurchasing this one I like the smoothing one but I like this more it's just nice it's so nice to feel actually hydrated after you've washed your face and quite unusual in my book. So now on to the makeup. Um, first up, this is Max Prep and Prime Skin Refined Zone, another recommendation from Mel. Um, I know she says she cannot do her makeup without it. Um, and I have a shared issue, a skin issue with Mel, and that is a shiny nose. So this is like a dot on either side of the nose, massage it in, and it's supposed to help control oil in that area throughout the day and it 100% does do the job. I haven't had any issues putting makeup over the top of it. I know that's a common complaint on the MAC website that it makes your makeup cakey, but I wonder if that's because people are putting it over their whole face or they're just using too much, literally a dot either side of the nose, work it into the pore area and I do my whole nose um, and it really has made a difference to stopping that area just becoming, you know, Rudolph shiny. By the end of the day highly recommend giving it a try if you haven't already so i picked up a couple of complexion products from tk maxx last month one was the abh bronzer in the shade rich amber bronzer i have on today absolutely loving it i had saddle i have i have saddle um which i prefer in the summer because it's a little cooler than this one and in the summer when i get tanned i go much more new I don't even know how to describe it. I have a very weird undertone in the summer I almost go gray um, with that olive tanned tone so I prefer cooler toned bronzers to work well with that in the winter I'm a bit warmer a bit more of a standard warmer tone so um, I need a warmer bronzer so this is like the exact same reasons I love saddle that it's just beautifully blendable very pigmented but easy to blend out as you can see you can whack on too much but it's easy to deal with because it blends out so beautifully it's the perfect balance between being a bit warmer but it's still not like orange um absolutely love the bronzers from abh and that was from tk max absolute bargain i think it was 9.99 same goes for this blush from becca i mean if you don't look at that and instantly know that is my blush where have you been this is glorious it reminds me of a glowier more pigmented max modern mandarin which is one of my favorite blushes i saw jamie jamie genevieve talking about this jamie and i have very similar tastes in products so i knew i was going to love it again found it in tk maxx 9.99 perfect glowy orangey blush so just bear in mind that these swatches are super blended out to show you actually the shades if you use them on your skin as opposed to you know a stripe that doesn't really tell you anything i also picked up i think last month but possibly this month i've just completely lost track of what the hell is going on to be honest um these are patrick tar blushes in she's seductive and she's adorable adorable i have on the cheeks today again it's a peachy glowy glorious blush what more do you expect it looks more pinky in the pan which is weird but it's definitely a sort of apricotty um peachy shade this one i find more luminous than she's seductive and it's not as 
pigmented which isn't necessarily a bad thing when it comes to blush but it's super buildable that's the lovely thing about it you can see it's got that gold shimmer running through it which i absolutely love just beautiful glow rather than like glitter absolute love it it is um it is one that you if you have if you're not very fair skinned you'll need to build it up but it builds beautifully um which i love in a blush because you know me very heavy handed so anything that kind of is buildable so i don't get too carried away straight off the bat is fine by me and then this one is she's seductive and i think this is the deepest shade in the collection um it's kind of a movie brown type of shade is what i'm going to go for again super buildable this would work beautifully on deeper skin because you can build it much deeper than how i use it this is like a light swatch um here and it's just super flattering perfect like everyday neutral blush if you're going for like a colorful eye look that you don't want to match with your blush this will go with any other shades colors in the eyes colors on the lips because it's just completely wearable with anything really gorgeous this one is more matte she's adorable is super glowy there's something for everybody i really hope he comes out with lots and lots and lots more of everything i just want it all from patrick i just love him i love his looks i love his style of makeup it's very much my style of makeup too although obviously he's a lot better at it you know Clearly. if i like if one person could do my makeup like a celebrity makeup artist it would probably be patrick i can't think of anyone who i'd rather do my makeup than patrick tar next up a highlight this is the natasha denona all over glow face and body shimmer in one light this is the highlight i have on today and it's the world's most underrated highlight obviously we all know about natasha's super glow formula this I like even more it's just that I'm gonna say subtle but I know it looks crazy because I have used it heavily today but you can use this to like the most subtle glow or you can build it up to beaming and it's just so smooth I'm gonna show you a super blended swatch so you can see what I mean about how subtle it can be Do you see how that's just kind of catching the light as if the light is just being good to you it's not highlight it's just the light you know or you can build it up to be beaming like i have done today super flexible um i think just because it's been around for a long time i don't hear people talking about it and it's a damn shame something else that i finally got around to trying this month that i find mega underrated and these are pixie beauties what are they called they're called i don't know what it's called it doesn't say on here but they're liquid matte lipstick so i have this one on today this is the pixie by marion macquillage um collab shade um and this is berry beauty the formula of these is my favorite matte liquid lipstick of all time this is the shade i have on my lips i've had this on at least two or three hours obviously it does enhance texture more so than like a gloss but really not that much it doesn't flake or crumble throughout the day i wore this um on my birthday night out when i was drinking margaritas like they might run out um i had obviously a full meal then i got home had a coffee at the end of the meal um and it was thai so it wasn't like you know it was a neat thing to be eating nothing didn't have to reapply i also then we went for lunch the next day i wore it again um, and i did reapply that day um and again it was it was one of those rare liquid lips where you can apply it on top without taking it off and starting again and nothing bad happened no crumbling no thick flaky it doesn't feel drying i don't take it off and my lips are like just falling off my face i am super impressed with these really really like them um yeah can't say enough good things if you are after a matte liquid lipstick like me you hate them give these ones a try um i also picked up one of patrick tar's uh, monochrome moment silky lip cremes so this is a matte formula but it doesn't dry down so it will not be like completely transfer proof but it also won't dry down so if you hate matte 
drying down, setting in place, you know, won't transfer lipsticks. This will give you the perfect, you know, opaque lip colour, all of that stuff, but it's slightly, slightly on the more satin leaning side, but still pretty matte, but not fully drying down. So it will transfer, but they are going to be a little more comfortable um, than your typical matte lipstick if that's not your thing. Like it's not usually mine, but like I said, I'm going to be definitely picking up more of these shades. So here's some swatches of all of those for you. These are the two Pixies and this is the Patrick Tar, which as you can see, just has that bit more of a shine to it. Obviously these need to dry down, but that's how that Patrick Tar will stay. A little bit more of a satin finish, but pretty matte, but not drying down. Next up, an eyeshadow palette that I haven't talked about or used a lot because a lot came out at the same time. I picked this palette up at the same time I picked up Natasha Denona Mini Gold and the Metropolis palette, then the Patrick, Patrick? Patrick on the brain, the Pat McGrath Divine Rose, they all came out around the same time and I lost my mind and just put this one in, to one side and I have barely picked it up since. And this is the Carly Bible ABH palette. It's what I've got on my eyes today. And I just feel like looking at it, it says more springtime than anything else to me. I've got these three shades on today. Um, these two in the crease and then this on the lid and then I think I use this one under my brow and this in my inner corners and it just screams spring and I'm just using it more and more at the moment really really enjoying it I feel like it wasn't really wintry for me maybe some of the purples yeah I guess they're kind of icy um, and things like that but at the moment I'm just loving this is the perfect like Valentine's type look um, and I'm just really starting to reach for it now and giving it a full chance you know a really boring product but i must mention it this is benefits 24 hour brow setter um for months i've been using the morphe brow gel and i'm here to tell you if like me you thought there'll be no difference between a super cheap the morphe brow gel um and um, the more expensive benefit one there is there actually is i really didn't think it would make any difference but it, this really holds the brows in place. I've been getting really good brow growth lately, really great regrowing from my brows. Good job guys, good job. So I want them to look fluffy and full and stick up and give me that like soap brow look. And this holds them in place and gives me a much fluffier, fuller brow, but they are like rocks. If you don't like that rocky brows, probably not for you, but they are there they are in place so i really recommend that if you're looking for a good brow gel um next up i have a few mascaras one is a fail two are holy grails that would have worked better if i could have remembered it but you know first up the fenty mascara if you watch my review absolutely love this mascara definitely becoming a firm favourite in my drawer. I don't think long term it's going to beat out my Monsieur Big. I will say, I feel like I'm ready to say that now. I'm, it's sadly the love affair with Monsieur Big continues. Well, not sadly, because you know, that's no bad thing, a little bit of commitment these days. Yeah, absolutely love it. If you don't like Monsieur Big, it's too wet of a formula for you. It's too much for you. This is a hair less of a fat lash because it doesn't join your lashes together so much as the Monsieur Big. So if you like that look, if you want a more lifted, keeping more of your lashes rather than being joined together, look then this is a very, very close second currently. And there's still time, maybe I'll change my mind. Um, another one I found this month that I love, it's the one I've got on today. This is Longcom Hypnose Drama. Um, I picked this up in a set with a full-sized Hypnose, um, and then it had three minis of all the Hypnose spin-off mascaras, if you will. So I think there was Doll Eyes, Drama, and something about black, like n something noir, something about that haven't tried the other two yet doll eyes and that other one um but i tried this one a few times now i've got it on today it's very reminiscent of monsieur big but not as wet and the brush is like a little wave which gets right into the root it's not the easiest to use on lower lashes because it is a really big long brush but 
for top lashes absolutely love it it's very similar to miss your big i don't think it's quite as wet of a formula so again another one that might be good to try and a fail for me was the original longcom hypnose as I have it on my lower lashes today actually which it's fine for if you wipe all the product off of the wand it's fine on lower lashes top lashes doesn't do it for me it's not enough it's too natural if you want a super natural lash that looks fluffy and gets a bit of length but not much volume you may like it it's definitely not my type of mascara it's not my type the last favourite of the month, although I hesitate to include this because at this moment I've only tried this twice, so it's it's kind of a favourite with a pinch of salt because, you know, I, I need to try it more. But this is the Hourglass Concealer. I did review this this week, um, so go check that out if you want to see exactly what went on. But absolutely a new fave mascara. I need to try it more before I know where it sits in my concealer rankings but nothing terrible happened, nothing bad happened. I really really like it. I don't think it's one that you will love if you don't set your concealer because it did crease on me um, on the side that I did not set and yeah it didn't wear as well unset as it did set so I would highly recommend you setting this one if you can. If you don't and any circumstances want to set your concealer then I don't recommend it. I recommend the Estee Lauder Double Wear Radiant or the Shiseido over this one or even the Armani Power Fabric if you don't want to set your under eye. If you don't mind setting, if you're younger than me, if you just like a matter under eye, more full coverage under eye and you're happy to set a very very decent concealer. I was going to say mascara but we've moved on. So there you have it, flipping long favourites for January. So I'm so sorry about that. If you have fallen asleep, I can only apologise. But we had a lot of stuff, you know, we had a lot of stuff to discuss having missed out December. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know what your favourites for January are in the comments down below. And if you've tried any of this stuff, how you guys got on, because we all know makeup is weird and it works very differently for every person on earth. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'd love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye, 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 bye.